Do you like speed? Do you like going really fast? Well follow me, I've got just the thing for you. Come on. 10, 9, 8, 7, we have a go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. I think canoe sprint, flat water, um, is about basically getting from A to B the fastest possible way. I think from a paddler's perspective it's good, it's, uh, you're up against everyone else, you can see everyone else, you know, you're lined up, you look across, you can see your competition, um, and it is simple, you, you know, you're going as fast as you can from one place to another. We race on a two kilometre lake. Um, we only race over 1,000 metres, 500 and 200. Uh, the men's race over 1,000 and 200 metres. Uh, the 200 metres, fast, furious, very, very exciting races to watch, all within a second, you know, finishing. Um, whereas the 1,000 metres, endurance, tactical. Uh, the women race over 500 metres, um, very highly contested racing, um, along with the 200 metres. Compared to athletics, for example, the distance we race, if we're racing a thousand metres, three and a half minutes or just under. In athletics, any running race of that sort of distance, you'd never get everyone crossing the line within such tight margins that we do in our sports as well. I was halfway down the race in the world and I couldn't hear myself breathing, I couldn't hear my paddles going in the water, I couldn't hear anything else but a wall of noise hitting me from this side with all the supporters and cheering and just a massive noise, it was incredible. You sort of have to just think about yourself and try not to like panic about what's happening around you. I don't want to be disappointed at the end of a race. Basically it's just a 200 metre flat out, 39 seconds it takes for the C1s and it just big guys going nuts really. <laughs> Uh, this is a K1 uh, kayak, it's a closed top boat with a seat and a footrest. The paddles are double ended, so a stroke's taken on each side of the boat. Here we have a C1 uh, or a canoe boat, it's an open deck boat. The paddler is in a kneeling position with a single ended paddle and T-piece paddling on just one side of the boat. So there's K1, which is one person boat, obviously he's in charge of everything that he does. Um, whereas you've got the K2, two people in the boat, the guy in the front sets the rate, sets the rhythm, very important. The guy in the back's just putting as much power in as possible. A lot tougher in the K4, obviously four people in the boat. Again, the driver sets the rate, sets the rhythm. Um, you've got the three guys in the back in this time. They're the engines, they're getting the boat up to speed. But they all have to gel together. If they don't gel together, if they don't uh, call the calls at the right time, then the boat falls apart. Okay, you've got the sea boats, which are the Canadian boats. Um, you've got C1, C2 and C4. Um, the number stands for how many people are in the boat. This is the Canoe Sprint Paddlers Samurai Sword. It's state-of-the-art design, it's full carbon, and it cuts through the water like a blade. The F1 boats of canoeing, basically, they're made for maximum speed, um, so they are twitchy, you know, people do fall in. Um, with both the Canadian canoes and the kayaks, um, they're both made from carbon fibre. You don't want any movement, um, you want to be as rigid as possible, so they get maximum speed. Um, it is similar to the sort of Formula One, they're, you know, they're high-tech boats. With the Canadian canoes, um, it's a lot harder to steer. They don't have a rudder, um, whereas the kayak does. Yeah, with the rudder, there's uh, basically a tiller bar in between your feet. 
Um, so it is as simple as you push it over to the left and you move left. Um, and then the wires go all the way to the back of the boat where you have the rudder which moves the right way. Um, with the Canadian canoeing, um, you've got one blade, um, they do something called a, a J-stroke and the basic technique is to lunge forward, get as far forward as they can with that lunge, get out nice and early and then repeat that action. Whereas with the kayak, you're obviously either side, um, still reaching forward as far as you can, but it's a rotation movement. You're rotating round instead of like the lunge, so that's the difference. You learn the way the boat moves because it does roll on the water. It just, you know, it does roll over, and uh, you learn to work with that. That's part of the reason, you know, you go so fast. You rock with it. It's the whole flow of the movement is the instability of and the reaction time of it, and it's nice. It's, that's what you work with, and that's, you know, what's exciting about it. Having a great boat is really important, but you're not going anywhere without one of these. All the training that you do, all the gym work, all the running, all the swimming, um, all that work that you do and then being able to put it down and you know like when you cross the line, that's everything that you've done. And it's all in, that's all that's important really is uh, you know when you get onto the start line, it's just easy. You just do everything that you can and all the hard work and that you've done um, is just translated into the water. Really try and stretch it forward, Tom. Bury that blade as far in the plants as you can. It's, it's such a hard sport, you know. It's very technical, but it's, you know, you, you are using the whole of your body. Um, people think it's just upper body, but it's not. You know, you are using every, everything. Um, so it's very close to, you know, cross country skiing, you know, and they're some of the fittest athletes out there because um, they are using the whole of their bodies. You just need some basic qualities of general physiological fitness, but then you can use the body limbs that you've got, yeah, the limb size you've got to actually accommodate your technique to make the boat move. So you can use, so it doesn't matter whether you're a girl or a boy, you can use your own body shape to your advantage if you're taught the right technique. Being a sprint athlete, I'm concentrating on the, the sprint events in the 1,000, the 500, but the skills that you learn and you develop and part of training, you can use across the board with kayaking anyway. I used to do marathon racing and I'll, I'll carry on doing marathon racing later on. And the sorts of training we do make you very, very aerobically fit. You need power to weight ratio and that, you know, if you're too big and bulky, you've got to be doubly strong to move that body weight. So you just need to be strong enough for your weight. And it is a strength endurance or a power endurance sport. So you don't need to have the biggest uh, one RM, that's how much weight you can lift for one rep. You need to be able to move the weight for a lot of times. You come down the course, you might do 200 strokes. You need to keep moving the weight. So you don't need to be, you know, a bodybuilder. You actually need to be, you know, a fit kayak athlete. You've got to be uh, massively uh, strong in the core. Um, we do a lot of core work. Um, it's part of our daily training. Um, but yeah, you have to have as strong a core as possible so you can put all the power down so you can get the boat up to maximum speed. If you haven't got core strength, this is what happens. It's, it's such a hard thing, you know, sport is it's the right of the cutting edge there. You're putting yourself on the line every day and trying to push yourself better and better and it takes years and years just to improve a fraction of a second. The key to having a good race is to get a perfect start. The first few strokes, obviously very important. Get the boat up and running. You can only affect what you're doing. Um, so when you do uh, get the boat running well, then it's you, you know you fly along, and uh, that's I think where all athletes would go. That they enjoy it the most is when they know they're running the boat well. The technical side of canoeing is so important. Um, you have to be paddling well to go fast. Um, you have to be getting round. You have to be reaching as far forward as possible. The rotation, there's so much, it's your whole body's used. It's like a lot of people will think that it's just your arms, but it's not, it's your legs, your hips, your rotation. It's all so important. You've got to get round as far as possible, and that is arm forward as far as possible, rotating round along with your leg. Your legs go down, you're pushing on one side, like a cycling motion, rotate all the way round there onto the other side, 
out as quick as you can, start coming out at your knee, out by the hip, into the next stroke, as, again, as far forward as possible, and then just repeat, repeat, repeat. I think it's a great sport for just finding your own individual uh, determination, spirit, um, the qualities that are going to hold you instead for life, as well as in sport, which I'm really interested in. And I think it's one of those sports that, you know, you're out there and it is all dependent on you. There's also part of it being with nature. You know, some of my fondest memories as a paddler, as a young paddler, was out on the water early morning, there's mist on the water and, you know, just it, the solitude, the, you know, just being part out of the hustle and bustle and you're training hard and, you know, no one else is there to witness it except yourself and you, you rank yourself and that's the satisfaction you get.